Welcome back to the VR Lab. You might have seen people using this technology I have here, playing with Beat Saber. I want to see what it's like in Sharecare. So I did it, and now I'm going to show you how to do it. To begin with, you'll need a green screen in your VR space. And you don't necessarily need a big one, like this one I've got here. You could use a sort of portable green screen, like this one, or something like this, just a sheet. But the more green you have, the better. For this tutorial, I'll be using a Vive Pro and a standard HD USB webcam. Alternatively, if you have an Oculus Rift or a DSLR camera, this tutorial should still make sense as the basic principles are the same. Set your webcam or camera on the opposite side of the room and plug it in. If you haven't already got Sharecare, I recommend you grab it. It's a free VR anatomy exploration tool that has an open source and growing library of healthy and unhealthy organs to explore and annotate. Alternatively, there is a list of VR programs that are compatible with Live on their website, which you can find by searching for Live VR. The guys at Live have done an incredible job making their technology accessible to relative newcomers. You don't need any coding or Unity Unreal skills, which is wonderful for clinicians and people like myself who just want to play and experiment with this and don't need to learn a bunch of new VR code. So all you need is the Live Client, which you can download and install for free from Steam. Straight away, a small dialog box should open with links to the guide and the Discord. I recommend you join the Discord so you can access the watermark free version of Live and as a bonus, you'll become part of a community of like-minded Live users. Now before we jump right in, make sure you install the virtual camera driver, which should only take a second. Launch the compositor. A new window should appear with various settings and options. A black window should appear as well. This is just your composite viewer. In the camera section, under camera profiles, click add. A bunch of new settings should appear. You need to select the camera input from the drop down menu under device. Pick the MPEG version with the highest FPS. Boom, the camera's active. And look, there I am. Hey buddy. Next, skip the calibration tab for now and jump down to keying. Shift the threshold and smoothness sliders down to zero so you can accurately pick the shade of green that you want to key out. Then you can readjust the threshold and smooth the sliders to taste. That looks good. Next up is crop and flip. Unlike me here, make sure the camera is central to your green screen. If not, adjust now, then crop the input and flip if necessary. If you so wish, you can rename your camera in the profile name to something appropriate or inappropriate. I'll leave you to explore and experiment with the advanced section. Now it's time for us to enter calibration. Live will open up a virtual space, but before you put the headset on, we need to tell Live where your camera is relative to your VR space. On the desktop, click Start Calibration and a message should pop up saying Confirm Position with the Trigger button. Pick up your controller and take it to your camera. Hold the controller as close to the camera lens as possible and click the Trigger button twice. Once to confirm the position and a second time to move on to the next point. You need to make sure that you hold the controller in a specific orientation. It doesn't matter which orientation, as long as you are consistent with it. I've chosen this orientation because I can easily match up the center circle on the controller with the crosses on screen. There will be a cross in the top right and bottom left corners of the screen. Again, make sure you're consistent with your controller's orientation. And for the two corner positions, make sure the controller is as far away from the camera as possible. Live will composite everything together and you should be able to... Ah, yes. So it's likely not to work out the first time. Mostly down to misclicking during calibration, or in this case, I wrongly flipped the camera input in the crop and flip section. Now that I flipped the camera back, we can move on to some fine tuning. Now we can whack on the head mounted display. While in the calibration space, you can move and lock the UI so you can adjust the position of the camera while observing from different orientations to get a more accurate result. Now what we're doing here is moving the virtual camera by tiny increments and using the position of the virtual controllers superimposed onto our camera view to match up the relative position of the virtual camera to the real life camera. 
It's actually a really fun trial and error process, matching up the virtual controller with the real one. Once you're satisfied with the calibration, you can click to save it within the headset or on the desktop. And I recommend that you export the calibration as a backup. You can leave the latency at three frames and 50 milliseconds for now and change it later if you feel the need to. Click save and you'll be returned to the original window. Click on capture, pick the program that you want to launch, share care, and then pick the highest resolution that Live allows you to do without complaining at you. Whack on the headset and make sure the program has been properly loaded and boom. Look at that, that's you inside Sharecare. Fun times. You can then either direct this composite view to another monitor or broadcast it via OBS or Wirecast. It's up to you. Using Live is a great way to share your VR experience. That's so much more immersive than simply watching the headset mirror. I hope this tutorial has been useful and that you've enjoyed it and that you can get Live up and running with your system as soon as possible. Thank you for watching our basic Live setup tutorial. Please share it with anyone you think might benefit from it and let us know in the comments if you have any thoughts.